Okay, welcome to the garden once again today. And uh, this time it is a requested video. So anyway, I'm going to burn some frankincense. You do that on charcoal like this. Same stuff they use for hookahs. Let me go ahead and pause and get this lit. Oh, it's, I think it's lit. Yeah, it's lit. Anyway, um, yeah, you want to wait till that burns completely out and it turns white hot, just like you would be barbecuing hamburgers or chicken, whatever. So we'll go ahead and wait for that to turn white hot and we'll put that resin on there. That's Boswellia carteri. I've got examples of resins out here. Um, yeah, this is a requested video from Taylor Talanzia. If you're not familiar with Taylor Talanzia, you can go check out his channel. So I'll do a little shout out. So, uh, yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, Taylor Talanzia asked me to do some uh, a video on the history of frankincense cultivation. So this should be a pretty fun video. I've got examples of resin out here. All right, this is uh, Boswellia neglecta resin. And it comes from that tree. Didn't come from that tree, but it comes from that tree. Or trees just like that in Kenya, um, all over East Africa, it's a pretty common tree. And here we have Boswellia carteri. I've already burnt some uh, neglecta already today. Um, I'm gonna burn some carteri next, which is this tree right here which is just coming out of dormancy. That's a subspecies of Boswellia sacra. Okay, the other resin over here, this is Boswellia prairiana. Now, I used to have a tree, well, kind of. Um, I had a tree of it uh, I ordered from Africa, actually, and it arrived dead and uh, you don't ever order out of country it's hard to get those in and you know they're they're pretty sensitive some of them if they're seedlings especially like that yeah they don't uh, fare so well in travel but uh, anyway we'll get into the history here but we're gonna burn a little bit first I've got some resin here I'm gonna take you through that Okay, so we're about ready to put some on now. That's what your charcoal should look like. Now that amount of charcoal is fine for out here, but I would only use one little piece if you're going to burn inside. That's one little piece of that is more than enough to fill up a whole room and scent a whole room. So you want to use this very gingerly. You know, be very gingerly about it. So anyway, that's uh, Boswellia carteri, like I said, from this tree right here. Now I've got a bigger tree of this out in the yard, and a big 15 get. Oh my gosh, that smells so good. It's got uh, it's balsamic uh, overtones of lemon, uh, citrus, uh, very sweet scented. Uh, one of my favorite resins. Uh, actually, I like all of the uh, frankincense resins, but uh, anyway, the elongata, that's got a blob of resin I'll, coming along. I'll save that for you guys, and I'll burn it in another video, because that's kind of curing on the tree. You want to let it cure on the tree. So, um, anyway, Taylor Talanzia wanted me to do this video, so let's jump into this. Okay, so in our modern era... Um, there's a handful of nurseries that grow it, and the cultivation of frankincense in the 20th and 21st centuries here only goes back maybe 20 to 30 years, all right, I think, and, uh, yeah, it's about a good estimate of years that we've been growing it, um, in our modern times here and one of the forerunners actually is many a tree garden um, they're the first ones I found that offered trees and um, 
I immediately, I found their number and I called up and I talked to Jason, Jason Islamea, who has written books on these guys, uh, all of the uh, members of the Bursaracia family. If you want to grow these and don't have those books, I really highly recommend you get that book or these books. He's written them on frankincense trees, these guys. Uh, Kamafora myrrh trees, that guy back there, that big weird looking tree back there. Um, and bursera trees, which produce a resin called copal, which the uh, Indians of Mexico and Central and South America have used as both medicine and uh, incense as well. Um, a lot of Hispanic people may know Bursera graviolens, or it's called Palo Santo. That is a member of the Bursera. It's a Bursera tree. Um, a hard one to get, too. I can't find it anywhere. I really would love to grow that one. But there's a, a big, it's a big family, especially with Camaphora, the myrrh trees. And uh, some of the myrrh trees do produce resin. But anyway, getting back into the history of the cultivation, there's a handful of nurseries. Many a tree grows them. Um, arid lands grow them. Um, arid lands is out of Tucson. Out of Africa here in uh, Florida. And now out of Africa has started a new nursery in Madagascar. So that means any of you in Europe or over in that area could order from uh out of Africa. The name of the company there is called Baobab Alley. So, and I highly recommend them. Um, it's run by Mike and Maureen Massara, who are just absolutely wonderful. Mike has given me a lot of tips on growing um, frankincense and both myrrh. And I'm getting buzzed by uh, bugs here, so I'm going to have to burn some uh, neglect in a minute. That's that resin from that tree. So I'll have to pause and bust that big chunk up because I don't want that big chunk on the charcoal here. Um, but anyway, yeah, it, it's... Oh, uh, the history isn't that much in our modern times. Um, there's a handful of growers, both private, and there's this crazy guy on YouTube called Todd's Tropicals that grows frankincense trees. Uh, yeah, him, yeah, that dude. Uh, <laughs> Anyhow, um, the Japanese are doing really well with uh, Boswellia also. They've got some amazing, I've seen some amazing Neglecta bonsai and um, a few other frankincense trees, bonsais out of Japan. Uh, Thailand, they're growing them there. Vietnam, they're growing them there. I don't, I haven't seen much in Korea though. Um, probably Indonesia, but um, for any other cultivation history, Oman, uh, they're taking steps to preserve the trees because if you over harvest them, the trees produce sterile seed and that's not going to do anybody any good. What You can't grow sterile seed. Um, hopefully Somalia, where the trees grow also, is uh, taking steps to uh, do that as well. Uh, Socotra, which is a part of Yemen, or governed by Yemen is actually this tree here comes from Yem, uh, Socotra. That's Boswellia elongata. I've got two of those. They're taking steps to preserve the trees with the climate change and the global warming and all that. They're getting some wicked storms that uproot the trees and um, just tear them to heck. And uh, also the dragon's blood trees of Socotra are becoming, everything on Socotra is IUCN red listed as, you know, endangered or vulnerable or critically endangered because, uh, you know, that's the only place they grow certain trees. But, uh, and they're taking precautions. But in Yemen, which is part of the uh, Saudi Arabia Peninsula, I don't think they're doing much because... I think those people in Yemen are try just trying to stay alive, period, because it's so war-torn there. All right, uh, yeah, I'm gonna take a break and bust that big chunk up and get some of that on that charcoal and burn me some neglecta because I'm getting buzzed by a lot of mosquitoes and bugs. So I will be back. Okay, so I busted up uh, that big chunk of Boswellia neglecta. And it's like, um, how did I do it? Well, there's this new invention. It's called a hammer. 
so <laughs> anyway that's got a uh, I, I do believe this resin the neglecta is one of the ingredients in Dracar cologne um, it's also called Dakar in um, parts of Africa so this ranges from Kenya all on the East Africa and in Ethiopia you get the Rivier and the uh, Papyrifera um, uh, anyway back into the cultivation back into the cultivation so yeah all those places are doing remarkable things with uh, Boswellia except for in Yemen on the Saudi Arabia Peninsula because they're just so war-torn and uh, you know when you're fighting for your life you don't have to time to fight for the life of a tree or your fauna which is really sad to me I mean um, I mean human life is important but if we destroy our earth um, there's no chance we're gonna live so you know talk any further about Boswellia cultivation we have to go back about 3,500 years to the 18th dynasty of Egypt um, now that was a cool period to me a lot of cool things were happening um, that most say the first okay you got that most say the first it was a cool Pharaoh um, that most say the second and his wife Hatshepsut who later became queen and was also they were brother and sister um, and then you have Thutmosis the third which was Hatshepsut's nephew and son to Thutmosis the second are you guys following me okay it's Egyptian family history is kind of crazy um, but yeah uh, Thutmosis II and Hatshepsut were brother and sister. He was a very sickly man and he passed away at a young age and Thutmosis III gained the throne but was too young to actually rule. Hatshepsut came in as co-regent and later declared herself as Pharaoh. Alright, now you can go watch documentaries on Hatshepsut and all that and see what actually happened um, it's the Egyptians documented things really well and if the Egyptians didn't like you they pretty much erased you from their history but anyway getting back to the Egyptians being the deeply religious people they are and Queen Hatshepsut declaring herself Pharaoh um, they honored the gods with incense and uh, she built a mortuary temple Here's a picture of both her and the temple. Um, yeah, anyhow, she was like really one of the cool female rulers of Egypt. And uh, she sent expeditions to reconnect trade lines into Puntland and with the people of the Hyksos, Hyksos, I think? Yeah, Hyksos. Anyway, to get supplies, reestablish trade with the people, and she brought back incense trees, these guys, you know, incense, trees of incense and frankincense, myrrh trees to plant at her mortuary temple garden. And there's actually remains of that, of one of the trees there. Here's a picture. I don't know whether it's a myrrh or a frankincense tree, but it really doesn't matter. Um, the history is just incredible. Um, anyway, um, she did assume the throne. I guess she said, I'm not your mummy, and I'm Pharaoh. So, anyway, uh, she died when she was around 50, and she ruled for about 21, 22 years or so. And uh, basically, her nephew, Pharaoh Thutmose III, because it wasn't her son because he had other wives but mostly the second had other wives and it was by another woman and uh, anyway he resented the fact that she declared herself Pharaoh so boom you don't do that you're erased from history so they tried to erase her but we found out who she is and 
all that nice stuff. And her mummy is, you know, hey, it's there. So, and she had diabetes of all things. But she's the only other one that I know of as far as trying to cultivate the trees in Egypt. Unless we go back, oh, 5,000 years and to Khufu, where he went to Egypt. You know, they sailed up and down the Nile and, you know, the Egyptians were remarkable people. And for people who are worried about whether they were black people or white people, it doesn't make a difference. They were people. They were amazing. And the main thing is, they left us as a human race all of this amazing knowledge and things that we can share today. So whether they were black or they were green or purple or red, that doesn't matter. But what does matter is they did what they did. They left us some awesome monuments and history to appreciate. So, but with that, um, Khufu, yeah, there's uh, texts and documents about where he um, worked with the trees, I guess, too. Um, he's a builder of this big thing. Yeah, the Great Pyramid. And here's a picture of him. So anyhow, yeah, Khufu did it too, and I'm sure there was probably other pharaohs that did it. And they traded with the Phoenicians and the Persians and uh, the Greeks, the Romans. So, But none of those people ever, I don't, I, I can't recall anything of anybody cultivating the trees back in ancient history other than Queen Hatshepsut that's really written and there's some references to Khufu but other than that that's it and did I forget to mention there's this guy on YouTube Todd's Tropicals that grows frankincense trees <laughs> I had to throw that little pun in there you know anyway um, yeah there's not much information out there on frankincense um, other than Jason Islamea, my videos, I don't see anybody else really doing any, there's some shoddy videos out there on frankincense cultivation, and they don't tell you anything about the potting media or anything like that, and you know guys, I tell you what, frankincense is a really cool plant, it's a worthy addition to any plant collection, it's a, it's a succulent tree, kind of like adeniums are. You know, and you know, hey, I grow them alongside my orchids, so they're not half bad. But anyway, I hope I, I enlightened you guys about the cultivation and the history, which there isn't much of it. I mean, the Thai people in Thailand are doing it, growing them, and they're doing fabulous. Vietnam are growing them also. I don't know about Korea, I haven't seen any trees from Korea yet, but Japanese people are really rocking these guys out as bonsais so they are definitely worth doing bonsais some of these guys do have big tuberous roots on them like the Rivier has big tuberous roots as does the um, Carteri and the Sacra so you know these the Nanas here excellent bonsai candidates and so are the Socotrana from Socotra Obviously, it's from Socotra. It's called Socotrana. <clears throat> Excuse me. But anyway, I hope um, that uh, answers some of your questions about the history, Taylor. And uh, I wish I could do a better job, but I, there's just not much information out there on the history of cultivation other than Jason's books. And you can get those books at Many a Tree Garden on eBay. So we'll go check out some other trees. Okay, here is my big eight foot tall elongata. I love this tree. Elongata is one of my favorite, favorite trees. I've had that, that was one of my first trees actually. That's about four years old. Nah, maybe, yeah, about three and a half. This raggly looking thing is a Boswellia sacra. I just pruned that back recently. And see how big that's getting. I got that in a big 25 gallon. Here's my other Carter eye. Which is just now starting to come to life. 
and another Boswellia neglecta which is just starting to wake up also you can see some growth starting in there and that's in a 15 gallon this here is a Boswellia amiro from the island of Socotra which should start wanting to go dormant soon but we got a lot of nice growth coming on it that's a recent addition that's like the crown jewel of my uh, frankincense tree collection here's another neglecta just starting to come back to life after being dormant these are bursera trees where copal comes from here's another one Oh, I got a microphylla out here too. This is my Bursera microphylla. Anyway guys, I apologize for such a long video, but uh, when it comes to frankincense trees, I really get into them and I love them. And uh, they are truly my life's blood as far as growing goes uh, this is what I want to grow um, the orchids are definitely a bonus but uh, frankincense is where it's at for me and that's what I am mainly growing look at that beautiful oak tree it's recently tried to assassinate me with pollen but uh, yeah I'm allergic to its pollen but uh, look at the structure of those branches give you some of you bonsai geeks some uh, um, yeah, actually, let's go look at, we'll close out with the uh, oak tree. This is a live oak, Bur, uh, Quercus virginiana. Anyway, thanks for joining me, guys. Um, sorry for such a long video, but, you know, hey, it's frankincense, and that's what my life's blood is. So, uh, it's a very, very old tree. We have some very old live oaks in here. All right, guys, love and peace. Show your plants some love and keep it growing. Bye-bye, guys.